Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is day 57 of my learning journey in Blender. Um, so tonight I set out with a seemingly simple task. I wanted to find out how you could create an embossed look on the side of an object. Uh, for example, a glass bottle with an embossed logo or text or a uh, metallic sign with branding on it. Um, you know, like you see behind me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, previously I'd used the technique where you'd add a text object to the scene, convert the text to a mesh, and then use a Boolean modifier to join the text mesh with the object that you want the text to be a part of. Um, but I wanted to see if there were alternative methods, hopefully faster and easier methods. So this sent me down a different path in Blender on the topic of displacement and the use of displacement nodes. That's where I started the night, basically. Um, so I opened up the Blender PDF manual, and it turns out there were three uh, different displacement methods that you could use. Bump only, displacement only, displacement and bump. Uh, brief summary uh, of my learning. Bump mapping is essentially faking displacement. Uh, it's creating the appearance of depth by changing the shading, but never actually altering the mesh surface itself, itself in any way. Um, so as a result, that's the least hu uh, resource hungry method. Uh, the second method was displacement only, which is more accurate displacement where it actually changes the mesh, uh, but it's also more memory intensive. And, and yeah, it essentially applies true displacement to the mesh surface. Uh, so, with this method I found you have to go to very high levels of subdivisions to get decent results. Um, so that's when I discovered yet another Blender feature that I hadn't come across yet, the adaptive subdivision feature. So this was this is an experimental feature that's been in Blender since pre 2.8. Um, so it's not available in the subdivision surface modifier settings by default, which explains why I haven't come across it yet. Um, but you have to switch on experimental features in the scene feature set tab in render properties and then you can access it in the uh, subdivision surface modifier settings. Um, so if I'm right about adaptive subdivisions, it's basically when you render out an image with that turned on, uh, the closer to the camera the a part of an object is, the more subdivisions the part of that object will have. Um, and the further away into the background it is, the less subdivisions and therefore the less detail it will have. Um, so basically it helps cut down the use of system resources where necessary and where possible. Um, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. So I mentioned it in relation to uh, displacement because the manual said that to use the displacement only method, uh, they recommend using um, adaptive subdivisions because it helps cut down the use of memory um, and cut down the amount of subdivisions overall in the scene. So yeah, there was that slight tangent. I learned about certain, at a certain point, you start seeing the flaws in JPEG based displacement maps um, and that PNG files tend to be a bit better, like uh, how 16 or 32 bit float maps are better than eight bit images since they can't represent all the necessary detail. Um, so that's good to know. I, you know, one of the common things that comes up on the internet is people saying that they've got jagged edges or there's something weird going along, uh, going on along the edges, and people say, "Are you seeing the floor in the uh, JPEG? Are you using a JPEG displacement map?" And uh, it tends to be an issue, it seems. Um, anyway, there was that, uh, and the long and the short of it is that I then discovered that there's a uh, add-on called Displace Modifier. Uh, not an add-on, just a modifier that you can add. And the displace modifier it uh, is, is a pretty similar thing. You take a texture that you put into Blender and then you can apply it to the surface of the object that you're applying the modifier to. So in this case, I just created a uh, sort of black and white font thing, white background and a black font in say Krita or some, whatever um, photo editing software you use. And I created a bit of fall off with a Gaussian blur effect and then put it in here. You can increase and decrease the strength and go positive or negative if you want it to be embossed or uh, the reverse. And yeah, this is the result. We can make it go fully out like that. That's a bit extreme, isn't it? Um, haven't tried it on like smaller objects or anything, just this uh, basic plane 
with a heck of a lot of subdivisions applied. So we've got the subdivisions here, and then we've got a subdivision surface modifier on as well for good measure. I just really wanted to smooth out the edges and uh, yeah. So that is in essence what I learned tonight. Um, I know it was boring, but it was something that I obviously had to learn at some point. Uh, better sooner rather than later, I think, with these kinds of things. So yeah. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Uh, that's pretty much it for today. I uh, don't know if you enjoyed this video, but uh, if you appreciate these videos, feel free to leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, it's appreciated. Um, I'm gonna call it here. I almost put myself to sleep. Have a good one guys, and I'll see you in the next video.